Today we are going to be talking about my top five favorite techniques that I am constantly using to make the most insane nightclub slash festival recaps. What's good guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be breaking down this exact video from the ground up. Sometimes something about a video just feels right. I'm gonna explain why that is with the introduction to this video. The intro is usually considered the first 10 to 15 seconds right before the drop of a given song. Now, within this time frame, you have one goal and one goal only. This being to grab the viewer's attention. This is how I did it and how you can do it too. Showcase the venue slash atmosphere. Was it packed? In-camera transitions, continuity and framing, speed ramping, dope title sequences, edit to the beat of the song, sound design, and shot variation. I try to incorporate these effects slash concepts every 10 seconds of the video. This helps to keep the viewer engaged and interested in the video. Let's hop inside of Premiere Pro and break these down. Showcasing the venue and only including your best shots is really gonna reel in the viewer. Here it's key to show the viewer what they missed out on without giving too much away. A great example of that is here, how I was able to combine a total of two shots, one with the venue being empty, and then from that same position, almost like four or five hours later, with the venue packed. So you can see there's not that much of a difference. I kind of just added these on top of each other and moved the frames around until they basically matched up with one another. But this is a great example to show the viewer what they missed out on. It went from empty to packed. Why weren't you there? Adding to this, you want to showcase a variety of different shots and angles like I did here. Showcasing the name of the venue, being inside of the crowd, being on the stage filming down at the crowd, being on the stage towards the left-hand side of the DJ, being back inside the crowd again, on the stage, being all the way in the back of the crowd, being behind the DJ, back of the crowd again, but way further back this time, all the way behind the DJ, but standing on a ladder to get this shot with everybody with their phone lights on to really showcase how massive the venue is. You'll see more examples of this throughout the video, but most of these shots should be captured really wide and establish the venue scene and what the viewer can expect from the rest of the video. I would suggest shooting around 24 millimeters less, a little more is totally fine, or you can include a drone shot, something that's wide and tells the story further. Something that sets the scene. Now we can talk about a different approach on the title sequence that I did. As you can see here, the name of the DJ is constantly going around in different fonts. Once again, just trying to capture the viewer's attention and not just include your basic static title that you see in every other video. How I was able to do this is exactly how you think. I basically just copied the name of the title and did it in a whole bunch of different fonts. And yeah, this takes a bunch of time, but it does create a really neat effect once you pull it all together. And because that took like 10, 15 minutes to do, what I did was put those 15 different title frames frame by frame, so only one frame long each to give that rotating effect. Then we took a little break and then I just pasted that same title sequence once again. So it didn't really just seem like they repeated. We got a little break in between. Just a cool and different way to grab the viewer's attention. Speaking of which, camera transitions do the exact same thing and they're one of my favorite effects that I use throughout every single video. An an example of that would be this right here. What we're trying to do is create continuity and flow. This shot is speed ramped, so the next shot is speed ramped, and so are the other ones. But while that's going on, we can also see that starting here, we start to zoom in to the shot. And then in this shot, we zoom in as well, creating continuity and flow. Another example of that would be here where we can see hands in the air. So the next shot, we see something again with hands, creating that continuity and flow. Here we can see that again, hands in the air, something with hands, and then again the DJ with their hands. Here's another example of an in-camera transition. We're rotating the camera backwards. So in the next shot, 
we rotate the camera backwards as well. Now these aren't back-to-back -back shots that I got live at the event, but rather when I got back to post-production, I noticed that there was continuity and flow between these two shots, so I stitched them together. This entire video is honestly a really good example of in-camera transitions because throughout the entire video, I'm really moving my camera. I want to show you guys what it looks like when I'm capturing this footage at the venue and how I'm moving my camera with the actual raw footage. But before I do that, I want to explain that at all costs, I'm trying to avoid jarring or abrupt cuts. This is going to turn the brain off from wanting to continue watching the video. This is what some of the raw footage would look like. Moving from left to right. moving the camera to the beat of the song. Here we can see another example of how I follow the motion. Moving the camera with the hands of the DJ, left to right, and then following the beat of the song. Zooming in and out, moving left to right, adding some whips and pans. Dope, now we can talk about continuity and framing. I mentioned it previously, but now I wanna break it down in its own section. For example, if a shot is moving forwards, the following shot should be moving forwards. This makes it easy for the brain to expect what's gonna happen next and wants it to continue watching because it's easy. For example here, the camera's moving backwards, and in the next shot, again, the camera is moving backwards. A great example of continuity here, we see the smoke machine going off. So in the next shot, we see a smoke machine again. This one is kind of following, and I planned that purposely, that where the smoke last was blowing into the camera, it's passing on the next frame. So it kind of looked like, even though it was just me filming, that I got the smoke from both different angles, when in reality, I just stitched it together in post. Like I mentioned previously, if we see hands in the air, the following shot should be hands in the air, hands once again, hands, hands in the air, and then lastly since those shots were all continuous and they were all similar, now we can break it up with something cool like this shot here, confetti in the air, smoke cannon going off. Lastly you can tell through a bunch of these shots that I'm trying to keep the focus in the center of the frame. This again is making it super easy for the brain to watch and want to continue watching. However, an example of what not to do is have someone in the center of the frame and then in the next shot put someone here in the right hand corner, which naturally is going to make your eyes shift and look up here. Now this is probably fine once or twice, but doing this a couple times in a row and having a shot here and then here and then your eyes moving all over the place that makes it really abrupt and jarring and really turns the brain off from wanting to continue viewing and just making the video feel like it doesn't add up like something isn't right and that's exactly why however on the flip side sometimes breaking continuity can be a good thing if you have a bunch of continuous shots and then you really want to grab the attention and showcase a really cool shot this would be a great way to do it an example of that would be right here these shots will be zooming in zooming in following continuity and then as those shots were zooming in and this one isn't it must mean that I'm trying to abruptly grab your attention to something significant that being this really cool shot with the champagne and the confetti going off and putting it in slow motion and speed ramping it and doing all these different effects now that I did that I can also start off a new kind of continuity which we talked about previously with the hands and the spinning backwards like you can see here so this would make sure that now I don't have to worry about continuing to zooming in because I already broke it and I'm ready to start something new this only really works though when you make sure that after breaking the continuity the shot is dope all right so i just mentioned speed ramping let's jump into that speed ramping is effectively this speeding up the shot slowing it down and trying to get the viewer through the best parts in the shot the fastest way possible which is super important nowadays with everybody's short attention spans and different social media platforms like Instagram Reels, TikTok, and so forth. I actually use this throughout the entire video, but let's check out some examples here. Opening up video one on the timeline, you can see these lines here, which are indicating that the clip is gonna start with being sped up, slow down, and then sped up again. So to create continuity and flow, like we talked about previously, combining all of these ideas, methods, and effects, naturally, you would want the next shot to speed up, slow down, and speed up, just like the shot previously did. So let's check that out. Speed up, slow down, speed up, speed up, slow down, speed up. Here again, you can see to try and carry the motion just a little smoother, the clip starts slow, kind of zooms in, speeds up towards the end, and then this shot here speeds up once again. Now you're probably thinking, well, how do I speed ramp? How you can effectively speed ramp is by right clicking on the clip, going down to show clip keyframes, time remapping, and clicking on speed. Once you do that, little keyframe pops up here. Click on that. You can adjust the speed of the clip, whether you want it to go slower, whether you want it to go faster, and how you slow it down or speed it up is based 
on what frame rate you shoot at. So I usually put it about to 300%. And then when you click on these two little lines in the middle, a little graph shows up. And what you can do is click on these blue lines and adjust the speed of what you want it to go in. Like you can see that I did here, making it a smoother speed ramp. A great example of this would be in this clip here, where I speed in, speed up, speed up again, and right here, going out of the clip, trying to blend them all together, utilizing speed ramping, taking you throughout the best clips the fastest way possible while making a seamless kind of transition. Next, we can see it in this sequence here, editing to the beat of the song, which we'll talk about later, speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, and then going into the next clip, speeding up, slowing down, and speeding back up once again. So let's check that out. You can see that right here, how it slows down just in this section, right where the line is here. Every line here is gonna show where it slows down. So you can see throughout the whole timeline, a lot of what I'm doing is starting the clip fast, slowing it down, and speeding it back up once again. And when you mix this with camera movements and motion, and when you pan and flip and move the camera, rotate it around, you're creating motion blur, which has to do with the rolling shutter of your camera. And adding speed ramps to this just increases the amount of blurriness that's going on and really allows you to make a really clean transition between all of your cuts. That's a majority of what I'm trying to take advantage of when I'm speed ramping, making seamless transitions and cuts between clips. Throughout that section, I mentioned editing to the beat of the song. Other than speed ramping, this is easily my second favorite effect out of all of these. Editing to the beat of the song dictates pacing and the flow of your video, whether you should slow the shots down or speed them back up. An example of this would be right here, where the first 13 seconds of the song, you can see towards the start, they're kind of slow, introducing you to the venue and what's going on, showcasing the viewer what they missed out on or what they could be a part of next time they show up. And as the beat of the song speeds up, approaching the drop, we can see that the cuts get a lot faster and a lot smaller. So let's play that out and hear how I edit to the beat and the bass of the song. Switching it up so it's not the same. Now. What I'm really editing to is that <laughs> Here is a very good example of that. Bam, 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 now what's super important about this is not trying to stick to one beat of the song throughout the whole video. This gets super static and boring and just creates a very predictable video. An example of that is this introduction here where the first couple of shots are on the beat of the song and then when it starts to get repetitive, I switch it up, include a long shot where there should actually be a lot of cuts but because we already saw that, I switch it up and do this. To the beat, to the beat, to the beat. Here, that long shot, to the beat again, bring you back in, and now to the beat a lot before the drop. Moving his hands to the beat again. Bam. Bam. Switch it up. Ba, ba, ba. 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 To help me out with this, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll throw markers on this song, which is in audio two, to help me dictate where the cut should be. For example, here and here you can see the little markers, which you can add by just pressing M on your keyboard. So you can listen to the song, close your eyes, and just hit M, 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 every time you hear an instrument or a part of the song that you think you wanna dictate the pacing and the cuts of your videos to. Moving on from editing to the beat of the song, you might have noticed on that same audio track that there's a bunch of audio files underneath it. This is what we're gonna call sound design. What we're trying to do with sound design is really immerse the viewer inside of the video and make them feel as if they were at the events. This can be really powerful psychologically and really wanna make them continue watching as it makes the venue seem way more fun. What I did just now is color the main song purple. Now that you can see that here, everything that isn't purple and on audio track two is all sound design. You can see a handful of different effects and things that I utilize to help make the sound design way more convincing. So now let's take a look at the video, mute the song, and hear what all of the sounds sound like without the song entirely.
sounds crazy, right? Now let's listen to it one more time, but with the song back. Feels way more natural with the song added back in. I actually have an entire video dedicated to only sound design on my channel, which I'll link in the upper right hand corner. But here are some of the sounds I used. Risers, bass drops, lots of different audience cheering sounds, camera clicks, smoke cannons, low pass filters, and much more. Let me show you an example of the low pass filter as I haven't really touched on this on my channel before. I'm usually using this to show importance to a certain shot. Right here, the name of the venue. And you can hear it happen right here if we click on this section of the song you can see that i have a low pass filter so let's hear what it sounds like without it and with it that's without and now let's listen to it with it back on you can see that it kind of subdues the sound of the song showing importance to the shot on the screen a second example of that where i want to show importance to a shot is right here Song mutes out, goes back in, out, back in. And really again, what the goal is here is just to do something different that may grab the viewer's attention or just make the video feel right. Lastly, I wanted to make sure that I talked about shot variation. This is something I did throughout the entire video just to make sure that it wouldn't get stale, boring, and repetitive. You can do the same thing by doing a handful of things that I'm gonna mention now. You definitely wanna move around the venue, whether it's behind the DJ, in front of the DJ, on the DJ stage, but don't just stick around there. Also move way behind the audience. Go inside of the audience. Try to get a different angle from up high. Try to do something that people haven't really seen at this venue, festival, concert before. A great example of this would be interacting with the crowd. I personally set those shots up because I knew the video could get stale and boring just watching people partying the whole time. So I pre-planned some ideas of somebody pouring a drink or asking girls to blow a kiss towards the camera. Getting somebody on stage with the DJ to put the DJ's headphones on. Here are some of my personal favorite shot variation ideas that I'll list off to you now. Interacting with the artist or DJ. Asking people to interact with the DJ. Putting arms around one another. Get someone to do something with a bottle of liquor or something with the headphones like I mentioned previously. Previously. Ask the DJ to throw their hands up and try to create a transition. As for the audience, you can go inside the audience, you can stand behind the audience, you can film the audience from on top of the stage looking down. Get some people to do a cheers with their drink, just like this here, creating a cool transition. <laughs> kind of match cutting, putting the cup to the lens, and then in the next shot, starting the same idea with the cups towards the lens, bringing them back. It's better without such like a wide angle lens, so it really covers the whole frame. But the idea is definitely there. You can also get someone to do something funny or introduce the video. Here are some examples of how I did this in the past. The only risky thing with this is that you have to make sure that it's engaging and capturing the audience's attention. However, worst comes to worst, you get back to the editing bay and you just decide to delete it. Just don't depend on it to make your video unless you are certain that it's gonna work. There's a handful of other effects I would love to discuss, but I'm gonna save them for further videos. So now that we know all of this, let's watch the video back one more time, keeping in mind all of these things and trying to point them out and see how I incorporated them all together. Paying close attention to how I showcased the venue at the start of the video and utilizing in-camera transitions, continuity and framing, speed ramping, the title sequence, editing to the beat of the song, creating flow, sound design, and all the different shot variations throughout the video. Let's watch it through with the sound and the timeline playing at the same time, just like we did at the start. Do. 
Sweet, I hope that you learned something today and that you were easily able to follow along with the breakdown of this video. If you enjoyed this video, I have a handful of other videos on my channel where I dedicate an entire video to just one topic, like sound design or in-camera transitions or dope effects that I included inside my videos. And definitely let me know in the comments or tag me if you plan on using some of these concepts, ideas, methods in some of your future recap videos. I always love checking out everybody's work. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll catch you guys in the next one, 12 p.m. Sunday AST.